little bit behind the scenes here as we get started. This is the last of three cars we're shooting in stunning Greer, South Carolina at the BMW Performance Center East. But full disclosure, this is the one I'm most terrified of because it's a baby buggy we're supposed to drive aggressively on a track. So with that, here we go. Uh, that's full tilt on a 500 horsepower SUV. <laughs> Puts a smile on your face. It's got a lot of power to pull out of a nice turn like this. A little delay there, and this is in full fat, Sport Plus on everything. It's shocking to me that there's this much power in a vehicle like this, which is effectively a crossover, one of those like non-utility ones. But God, is it fast. Question is, why does one need this kind of power in this package of vehicle? Uh, that I don't know. So technically, yeah, she's fast. But is it necessary? I feel compelled to handicap the steering, being that we've got this great track to play around with. So let's go to the straight here and switch over to comfort. We've got a beautiful bit of technical track coming through here where you go one, two, three, and four right on top of each other off camera, that last one. In comfort, it actually worked pretty well. It doesn't have quite the weight that I'm looking for. This is a full fat M. This is not like an M Sport and it's not the basic baby buggy. I would want more weight to the steering. It's not that it's vague or it's numb. It just needs a bit more weight. Let's rewind back to when we first drove this generation of X4. Believe it or not, that was here in Greer, South Carolina, just not on this track, it was on the public roads. And there the driving dynamics work for the job at hand. Here, rather than me tell it to you, let me sell it to you by pushing a little bit harder around this technical track. Let's hit the apex here. And the first thing you notice is when you get really aggressive, take a look at what the body does. There is pit, squat, dive, and roll. I would argue that there is an unusually stiff suspension, not because the engineers want to kill your intestines like a Z51 Corvette. Rather, they need it stiff in order to maintain composure with driving dynamics, even in situations as aggressive as this. Normally, when you and I drive a practical vehicle, whether it be a baby buggy like today or just a regular old serial production sedan, I usually couch those episodes with, well, it's not a 911 or it's not designed to go on a track. I can't say that today because, at least the track part, as I was in the presentation and the marketing folks are going out, well, this thing was designed to go on the track. Now, you and I both know I never buy into the marketing mumbo jumbo. So after the presentation and during lunch, I peeled off one of the engineers from Germany. I'm like, hey man, tell me the straight story here. Was this thing really designed to go on the track? He takes me underneath the car and points to the oil sump and explains the following, that it's not a, a side oiler like you'd have in a 911 turbo or a performance derivation of a Corvette. Uh, it's a two chamber oil sump and the bigger part is the normal oil reserve and there is a suction delivery system that pulls the oil and lubricates the engine whenever you're in like the regular modes, you know, like the map control thing inside the car. But if you're in like the M mode or anything above that, there is a secondary sump that holds more oil. Thus, when there is load on a track, it can pull more oil and thus lubricate the engine faster because of this two chamber oil sump, which is contained in a vehicle, and I'm gonna try to say this without laughing, that you put your children in. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, here's the real challenge. Not the power delivery, the components underneath this thing, the weight, none of that stuff. Not even the fact that it's a baby buggy. It's the impact of the center of gravity, the height of it on the driving dynamics. So you've got all this amazing kit that is designed to work on a track like this and work pretty well, as you can see. However, it takes some skill in driving because you can overdrive the center of gravity of this vehicle pretty easily. 
And it's not just one thing that's doing that. It's not the power, it's not the weight, it's not that there's a lot of squat in the back or a lot of lean to one side when you're pushing very aggressively. It's all of it coming together because you are just fighting the physics of what this vehicle is. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game in mind, the options game. And this round, it even confuses me. So uh, built in. This, I need to warn you, is a baby buggy that has 500 plus horsepower. So it ain't cheap. 2020 BMW X4 M competition for $80,400. To that, we add Toronto Red Metallic. I got a lot of friends in Canada. I don't know what is red about the city of Toronto, just the maple leaf. But uh, okay, Toronto Red Metallic, $550. Here's where we get some more confusion. The interior is called Adelaide. So it's a Canadian exterior and an Australian interior. Uh, so why don't we just call this the Commonwealth Edition, not the Competition Edition. Uh, that Adelaide is free. Uh, then we add the Driver's Assistance Package. This is the Distronic Plus type cruise control. That is $1,700. Then we add the Executive Package. That's the Wi-Fi hotspot, the heated seats in the front, the heated seats in the back, all sorts of stuff like that for $2,500. Then the M Competition Package. It shows it is free here, but it's really reflected in the price. I'm thinking it's about two grand. It's the wheels, it's the exhaust, it's the more horsepower slightly. Then there's ventilated seats in the front. Optional on an $80,000 vehicle, $350. Uh, and then there is the uh, delivery charge, which is $995. For a total suggested retail price of $86,495. Baby. I gotta think about that. If you guys have been paying attention over the past year or so, we've had the incredibly good fortune to drive some aggressive BMWs in great situations like this. Uh, and the thing that comes across is not so much the amount of power or driving dynamics, it's the brakes. Uh, very few of them have been carbon ceramic in situations like this. And the thing that I'm kind of bowled over is you don't get a lot of fade. And this has been whether we've had the car early in the track day, late in the track day like this one. And they really haven't been changing pads throughout the day. This one, full disclosure, I, I feel a little bit of fade, but I would argue this one's had to work harder than all the other ones we've driven today. So net net, what does that mean? Wow, that was fun. That is my most favorite part of this track. Uh, it means that one does not need to spend nine grand on brakes or carbon ceramic rotors. Uh, BMW with that M Sport brake option package, to be very frank with you, they've been kind of, they've glossed over what the definition of that is, but mainly they change the pads, the calipers, and I believe the rotors change. It was about a year ago, also at a BMW Performance Center track, but this was the one out on the West Coast by Palm Springs, where we drove the then new, now current gen M5. And then about a month after that, we drove the Santa Maria Madre de Dios, the born from Mount Olympus itself, AMG E63S wagon. Now, both of those, ridiculous, have a trick in that you can switch off the torque from going to the front wheels. They're all-wheel drive cars, but you can make them 600 horsepower rear-wheel drive only missiles. I was hoping the folks at MG and BH would bless the X4M with the same trick. They thought better of it. So there is an all-wheel drive system fitted as standard here. It is rear-wheel drive biased, but there's no like special switch to send all the power to the back. However, there's kind of like a back door here in that there's an active E differential. And from what it was explained to me, that depending on how much load, and we are asking for a lot of load in this episode driving on the track, it can send 100% of the torque to the rear wheels. We need to demonstrate something rather odd to you guys here, especially as we get to the more technical part of the track, otherwise known as the amusement park. Uh, take a look at my body, specifically the movements of my body as I go through these turns here. We'll slide up for this apex here to get into the straight. And notice my body's moving around in the seat. 
Uh, there are a lot of adjustments here, but still, let's get to the technical part of the track. This is my favorite part. One, two, three, and four. God, that's good. Oh, a little rotation there. Notice how much movement. You don't get that in other, even sporty SUVs. There's something about this seat, this setup. Maybe it's the higher center of gravity. I don't know what it is but it's not a comfort thing, it's there's just too much movement. It's like wearing a shoe that's almost too big for you. Uh, and I can't honestly sit here and tell you it's a texture thing, maybe cloth would help, maybe more bolstering, I don't know what it is, it's probably a combination of the two. Actually, you know, it'd be really cool. More bolstering and like a, a check pattern seat, you know, like a, the, uh, the old uh, 300 SL Mercedes, like that pattern they had in that, imagine in this thing, now that, that would not only be a good solution, but would look very cool. Let's circle back to that discussion about this thing being designed for a track and really unpack what that means. This is, what, two plus tons, has over 500 horsepower, so you can imagine that structural rigidity, this is going to be a problem, especially in a vehicle that has a very high center of gravity. So there's a number of things going on here, but specifically in the engine compartment, there is an A brace in the front as well as another one in the back of the engine compartment. And then like we've seen in like many JDM cars or other very high performance cars, there's a strut brace from shock tower to shock tower. Now the one we're driving, that strut is steel. However, as we learned in what, the BMW i3 and the BMW i8, BMW tries to focus on this whole thing about carbon fiber reinforced polymer. So starting in August of last year, they made an optional version that is carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Now, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, this ain't about saving weight. This is more about adding even more strength to a vehicle that really needs it. Wow, this thing is indeed a hell of a lot of fun. Untraditional fun, but a hell of a lot of fun. And even I now have to admit, I get the whole concept of the sport utility vehicle with a lot less you. They replace the, the former full-size sedan, okay? And they can do more and go to the trailhead. But for the life of me, I just do not understand the sport utility with less you, but with more performance, which this is, especially in a wonderful spot of the track like this. I, I know I'm a cheapskate, I'm gonna say it. It's 90 grand, people. 90 grand would buy you a used Chevy utility vehicle and a used Porsche. That's my struggle. Am I being crazy here? But that's my struggle. Other than that, hell of a lot of fun.